uh, wind we've had like the last four events straight so it's 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 basically disc golf now yeah. you know it's not disc golf without 20 plus mile per hour winds right now so Hey guys, Johnny Disc Golf here at the 2019 San Francisco Open presented by Absolute Extracts. I'm standing here with the 2018 champion, Mr. Paul McBeth. How's it going today? It's going great. Uh, the weather's actually foggy, but it's, it's still warm for San Francisco right now. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, first question, man, how's the arm? I know a lot of people weren't talking about it at GBO, but you had a nasty case of poison oak. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I think, you know, this arm was about twice the size of this one. It, it was more so it affected the drive, the distance okay. um, and putting. I was kind of so wrapped up that I, I just couldn't get the consistent release. But um, arm's great. Took the week off last week and there's just a few scars, but no swelling or anything. So sure. feeling good. Sure. Back to 100%. Uh, how are you feeling about your game at this course, though? Uh, it is, I would say it's vaguely similar to GBO in that it's long and there's a lot of OB. Um, but I think that the elevation here is a lot more drastic. Yeah, I think drives are really important here, um, and, I, and I'm feeling really confident in my drive here, uh, just the up and down the hills, and and it's, it is a golf course, but it doesn't really feel like a golf course. Um, nice. You know, yeah, we're kind of surrounded by some big trees and, and things like that. We got to shape a lot, you know, to the right, to the left. Um, not many shots are just wide open fairways. There, there is a few, but not many because we're either in the trees throwing out or, or throwing into some. So, uh, yeah, this, this, is, this doesn't feel like a golf course at all. Cool. Um, as the 2018 champion, uh, is there anything or any of the changes new this year? We've made a couple par threes and a par fours. We've adjusted some OBs. Uh, anything sticking out to you as either good or maybe not so good changes? I think the hole four is the, is one of the changes turned into a par three. I think that's a better hole. I agree. Um, I think where it was before was kind of unreachable. You kind of had to just throw it and hope it got through. This one, if you hit the gap, you know you're going to be putting. Uh, I know there were some other holes that needed changing, like uh, eight, seven. Um, they did make changes. I don't think they're great changes, but they're better okay. changes. Yeah. yeah, I think they I think they can still improve on them uh, in the future. Cool. Yeah, I, I, uh, there was a lot of talk, you know, there was like the tweener holes, right? And yeah. we were trying to figure out what's the best way. Do you lengthen them? Do you shorten them? Uh, it's good to hear your perspective on it. Um, wind. It is going to be an issue this year. It's picking up now, but honestly, the practice days, it hasn't been that bad. Uh, is that something that you're like in your mind preparing for even though maybe we're not seeing it on the practice rounds uh wind we've had like the last four events straight so it's 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 basically disc golf now yeah. you know it's not disc golf without 20 plus mile per hour winds right now so um it is what it is like you know yeah. we're, we're either going to play with it or we're going to get lucky and not have it but i know san francisco players or people from here want the wind yeah oh yeah so you know yeah, it doesn't feel like people are actually playing Glen Eagles until it's like ripping winds. Yeah, um, yeah you got the, the the bay and the ocean on one, you know, each side. So it's surprising that it's not windy yeah. all the time. Um, how do you feel on that same note? Like, the wind is great. It makes it it's it is what it is. It makes it more you know difficult, dif uh, you know, harder for the pros. But it does kind of take away the highlights. Um, I, personally, I was cutting the top 10 video from GBO, and there just wasn't a ton of like long putts or ridiculous drives. How, is that how, where, where do you stand on that uh, i think the wind definitely affects the putting the long putting i think that's the biggest um i think that's the biggest factor in in the disc golf scoring yeah. but as far as highlights it does take away of the it does take away a lot of the the highlight drives because um you know we're, we're either going more over stable to be safe and keep it in bounds and and that's the thing you know it's the out of bounds you know on the courses you're, you're saying like gbo has a lot out of bounds so we're taking the more overstable shots, leaving it in the fairway, just yeah. trying not to give away strokes by going OB. So this one, I think there's not as much OB. So, you know, even if it's windy, I think there's going to be some really big drives. Um, but, uh, yeah, so far, you know, GBO and the, the, the other tournaments we played with the wind, it kind, of, it kind of took those highlights away because there was so much OB. Yeah. Um, are there any holes sticking out to you? that could be maker breakers. You know, we have the island on 16, which is vaguely similar to GBO in that it's like a four or a two hole. Uh, anything sticking out to you? Not one single hole. I mean, eight, 18, I think if you could take a five pretty easily, um, but I don't think that's a make or break. Uh, I think it's more so the back nine. I think there's a lot of birdie opportunities back there, and if you're just not not um, cruising through that stretch, you can get a lot of pars or bogeys there while other players can almost birdie all of them. So I think that's a key stretch through there is the back nine, but, but not one hole in, in my mind sticks out as, as a make or break kind of, kind of thing. 
Yeah. Um, I think one of the more unique things about this tournament, you know, off the course, is that it is presented by Absolute Extracts, uh, which is a cannabis-based company. We have not seen that a lot in the scene so far. You know, we've seen breweries and, and other, you know, kind of vaguely similar industries get involved. How do you feel about that, you know, not as like a personal thing, but like on a professional sense, how do you feel about that entering the scene? It's interesting. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. I think, you know, if anywhere was to have it, it would be Colorado or California. Uh, you know, I grew up here in California, so it's it's been something that I've seen, you know, coming into not disc golf necessarily, but more so just like the mainstream of and, and the culture. Um, so it's. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It, it's really hard to have a, a true opinion on it because, you know, I don't I don't use any of those products. Sure. Um, and I and I know a lot of people that do. And, and I think, you know, the, the medical side and things like that is very I think it's it's really coming to light on, on the benefits that it has for a lot of people. So that is that's a positive side. But I don't I think people use and abuse it, too, at the same time. Yes. So, you know, there, there's both sides of the fence there. So. You know, if, if it comes in at a professional level, I think I think it could definitely work not just for disc golf, but a lot of other um, professional events. So so we'll see, you know, and, and if it blows up, you know, as, as, to, as to a big thing where, you know, where other sports do it, disc golf can say that they kind of started it. Sure. Yeah. I, I think only time will tell. Right. You know, this is even the day before the tournament. We haven't even really seen its effect on the, the greater you know mindset of the public. Um, I will say, though, it's been overwhelmingly positive as far as. Um, you know, uh, the masses feedback. Uh, that's, that's exciting to see. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think a lot of people have taken, taken well to it and not been as blown away. And I think it, the name itself isn't like, Oh, cannabis company, exactly. you know, so I, it's kind of, important to us. yeah. Yes. So, so it's kind of, is a little under the radar. I had to look it up to know exactly mm -hmm. what it was. Um, so it's, a. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, and and I think if it's here at a professional event and it's it's treated like it, you know, some alcohol companies have beer gardens, and sure. and you know, from what I hear, there's not going to be anything like an absolute extract garden yeah, or anything no, like no, that. Yeah, no, no, no on-site so, consumption. So, yeah. uh, you know, and there's different ways to, you know, not necessarily hide it, but keep it, you know, kind of like with the vape pens and the yep. CBD and all that stuff. You know, you wouldn't even know, but yeah. you know, if, if people were smoking around here, it's kind of, yeah. it's a different sense. Yeah, very, so. very more obvious. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's see. Let's take you off the disc golf course. Uh, you're in San Francisco, in the Bay Area. I don't know exactly where you're staying. Uh, is there anything you're doing off the course, in the city, in the Bay in general, that you're looking forward to? Well, we already did most of our, our fun stuff. Yeah. We got here. Hannah's birthday is May 13th, so we kind of came out here early to celebrate. There's a restaurant there that she really likes, uh, or that she's always wanted to go yeah. to, which was International Smoke. So Now she really likes them. Yeah, so we yeah. went there for her birthday and celebrated uh, over the weekend, and now uh, we're actually supposed to go there again tonight. That's how good it was. So, um, okay. But other than that... We, we kind of did our thing. We walked the city, mm -hmm. um, and now we're kind of just staying south of the airport, just away from the city and kind of just in, enjoying, you know. It, it, it's way different, though. It's yeah. way different. We stayed in the city for, for, for two or three nights, and then we went down there, and it's like, you know, you're in a major city, and Wait. then you're only 10 minutes, 10 miles down the road, and it's like small town, yeah. it seems like. Yeah, it so, turns right into the suburbs. Yep, so that, sure. that, that's where we are now. So we got all the little shops, all the little, you know, hole-in-the-wall type places. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, it's been an interesting experience. No, that's great. Uh, I'm glad you got to take it in, uh, you know, I, albeit not a ton, but while you're here. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest developments for you, as far as the tour and kind of disc golf as a whole, is that ridiculously huge tour bus that you guys have. Um, a, is it out here right now? And B, what's the updates on it? Like, like how are you feeling on that whole that, that front? Well, it's not that big, actually. It's only 32 feet. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I mean, it, it probably does look big. It's, yeah. it's flashy. Uh, it's, it's very similar to the other Discraft uh, mm -hmm. RV that's out there. But um, I've told myself before I'm never taking a, a vehicle, like a big vehicle, west of Texas. Yeah. <laughs> And once you get, you know, yes. past Texas, you're yes. driving at least 10 to 15 hours mm -hmm. just to get to something. Yeah. So um, it's on the East Coast. We're okay. playing uh, this one, Santa Cruz, and then we're, we're going to skip out on Beaver State and Portland, uh, Portland Open. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to play A tier over there in Virginia, and then I think it's Tennessee State. Okay. And then uh, for, so those two weekends, and then uh, the weekend of... I think Beaver State will be at the U.S. Amateurs up in Michigan. Okay. So, so doing some more uh, East Coast stuff, so we can sure. be in the RV more so than, than flying again. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Macbeth Disc Golf, Discraft, the Kong is now readily available for everyone. I believe when we last spoke at Waco, it was like just hitting or just about to hit. Yeah. Um, how is that going? Like the kind of the business side of this whole venture. 
It's going great. Uh, the Kong was really popular. Um, I think it sold out at a lot of places, mm -hmm. and, and the demand was really high. And it, I mean, it's still a prototype. I mean, it's it's probably on the back end of that now. But you know, there was all sorts of styles that we put out. We put out Domi. We put out mm -hmm. Flat. We put out uh, um, just just something so we could get feedback because it is still a prototype and you know the mold's going to be the same no matter what but yes. it's like do we want it to be yeah. domain do we want yeah. it to be flat yeah do, what do we want and i think uh they're leaning more towards the flat people like the flat top it's a little faster not as overstable um uh, which which I, i'm happy for uh because i, I throw the force a lot mm -hmm. um and and i really like the force so the the kong is being flat is different sure you know, we didn't want it to be too close to the four, so it's different and it's more controllable. I think a lot more people can throw the flat style than the overstable domi. So we'll see. Um, you know, it's not the final run is out, not out, you know, for consumers yet, but uh, I think that's where we'll end up going. Okay. But, but it's very popular disc. Any any idea, rough idea on the date of the next that next version of Kong at all? I would guess U.S. Amateurs. So what is that, okay. three or four weeks from now? Yeah. I, that'd be my guess. I'm not 100% sure, sure, but I think they've been waiting for the big Discraft events to kind of uh, kind of do that kind of stuff, sense. you know. Okay. And then with all the Tour Series discs, I think it was like eight different molds yeah. or eight different, you know, designs. They've been uh, they've been pumping those out. So yeah. I don't I don't mind being on the, you know, letting well, the... Yeah. Let, the, the let yeah. it breathe. Let it breathe. Yeah. So, so letting the letting the team disc come out and... Uh, getting those getting those going great i saw i saw you actually at gbo throwing mm -hmm. i don't know if it was specifically those but definitely that like mint looking swirl yeah, yeah. which ones are you liking that was the austin hannum force okay um so that was sent to me right around the same time they came out in kentucky mm -hmm. um so i had two of them in my bag i have one now i just felt like two was too many for this course i need a little bit more overstable with the wind um but uh, I haven't had a chance to try everything yet. Yeah. Um, what else? I have one of the drones, uh, oh, Presnel yeah. drones. Presnel, yeah. I still need to toss out a little bit more before I knock out my other one for that. But uh, yeah, looking forward to trying all of them. Uh, I get back home after these two, and, and I'll probably have some some at home to try. Great. Well, I know you're a busy, man. You've got things to do. You've got a small town to be just south of here. Um, I want to get you out of here just with the opportunity for you to speak to the fans, say anything you want, you know, to the to the the hordes of Macbeth fans out there. Uh, what do you got to say? I just feel like it's the same thing every time. Just thanks for watching. Uh, support these guys. You know, they, they bring the content to you. I can only, I can only play. So if it weren't for you guys, they wouldn't be seeing this. So, uh, yeah, keep supporting these, uh, media guys and, and Johnny football right here. Thank you, man. Johnny well, I, disc golf. Johnny you. disc golf. This is new age know. Johnny football. <laughs> Johnny disc golf now. No, I appreciate your time, Paul. Seriously. Uh, you know, you got a million things you need to be doing. Um, for all of you at home, if you want coverage of all things disc golf, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out that interview. I just want to take a little bit of time at the end of this video to thank a few early season sponsors. That's Disc Golf Pins, OTB, Airborne Disc Golf, and of course Prodigy Disc for hooking it up with so many sweet D2s. Thanks guys.